Hello, welcome to Concept E classes. In this session, we will study the second chapter of class 8 science, microorganisms, friend and foe. The chapter will be completed in two videos. So let's start part 1. The entire chapter 2 basically contains three sections. The first one is what are microorganisms? Where do they live? Microorganisms and us. That is the effects of microorganisms on us. And this section is again divided into two. They are good effects and the harmful effects of microorganisms. In this video of part one, we'll be covering the entire portion except for the harmful effects of microorganisms. Microorganisms. What are microorganisms? The living organisms that are around us which are very small and cannot be seen with our naked eyes are called as microorganisms. Why are they called as microorganisms? Because they are very small in size. These are some of the examples of microorganisms and they are also called as microbes. They can be seen with the magnifying glass or a microscope. Now microorganisms can be classified into five groups namely bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae and virus. Now let's study each of these groups briefly. The first one is bacteria. Bacteria are single celled organisms that exist in millions in all types of environment both inside and outside of other organisms. Example bacillus. Bacillus is a bacteria that lives outside that is in soil and water and E. coli is a bacteria that lives inside the intestines of human. Now some of the diseases caused by bacteria are typhoid and tuberculosis. Now the second group of microorganisms are fungi. Fungi can be single celled or multicellular organisms. They mostly live on land, mainly on soil or on plant rather than water. Some of the examples of fungi are Aspergillus. Aspergillus are found both indoor and outdoor. Rhizopus. They are usually bread mold. If we keep a bread outside for more than one week, we can find grey or black patches on the top of the bread. This is usually a fungus called as Rhizopus. The third one is Penicillium. A molecule of this penicillin is used as an antibiotic called as penicillin. And the diseases caused by fungi are aspergillosis and fungal infections. The next microorganism group is protozoa. Protozoa are single-celled organisms that live in a wide variety of moist habitats including fresh water, marine environments and soil. Example is amoeba and paramecium. The diseases caused by protozoa are dysentery which is uh, diarrhea and malaria as well. The fourth group of microorganism is algae. Algae can be single celled like chlamydomonas or multicellular like spirogyra. The algae live in fresh water or sea water. Some algae can grow on rocks, soil or vegetation as long as there is enough moisture. Algae re requires moisture for its existence. Now the fifth group of microorganisms is the virus. Viruses are the smallest of all the microbes. They are different because they can survive and reproduce only inside the cell of other host organisms. That is, viruses are different from all these four groups of organisms because these four group of organisms can survive both inside and outside other organisms but viruses can survive only inside the cells of other host organisms. Example of viruses are adenovirus. This virus causes fever, sore throat, diarrhea, pink eye etc. and bacteriophage it is a type of virus which is used as a substitute of antibiotic. So we have studied what are microorganisms and the classification of microorganisms. Now the next section is where do microorganisms live? There are microorganisms everywhere. 
from ice cold environment to very hot deserts microorganisms are also seen in marshy lands as well as animals microorganisms are also seen inside and outside of humans so we saw what are microorganisms where do they live the next section is microorganisms and us microorganisms play a very important role in our lives some of them are beneficial in many ways and some are harmful and cause diseases that is microorganisms can either be a friend to us or it can be an enemy or a foe to us now let's study each of this beneficial uses of microorganisms in this chapter so the first one is making of curd and bread microorganisms can also be used commercially microorganisms can be used for medicinal purposes microorganisms increase the soil fertility and it also clean the environment now let's study each of these purposes in detail now let's first study how microorganisms help in making of curd and bread curd contains a bacteria called as lactobacillus this is an image of the bacteria lactobacillus this bacteria promotes the formation of curd have you seen how your mother makes curd she takes a bowl of warm milk and puts a spoon of curd into it and after 8 to 12 hours if you take that bowl of milk we can find that the whole milk is converted into curd how is this possible this is done with the help of lactobacillus the lactobacillus which is present inside the curd multiplies in the milk and converts it into curd bacteria is also involved for making cheese pickles and other food items like rava idli or patura bacteria and yeast are also helpful in the fermentation of rice idli or dosa batter this is an image of yeast so what do you mean by the process of fermentation so let's take an example if we take some flour add some sugar and water into it along with a small pinch of microorganism called as yeast and knead it into a soft dough after 2 hours we can find that this dough rises up this is due to the process called as fermentation fermentation occurs in the absence of oxygen and in the presence of the microorganism called as yeast these microorganisms called as yeast break down the sugar and starches into alcohol and this process is called as fermentation fermentation is the process of breaking down sugar and starches into alcohol so in this process what happens is that the yeast reproduces very fastly and pro produces carbon dioxide during respiration and because of this gas bubbles form and it fill the dough and it increases the volume that's why we use yeast in baking industries or for baking bread now secondly let's study how microorganisms are used commercially microorganisms such as yeast are used in a large scale for the production of alcohol wine and acetic acid for this commercial purpose microorganisms such as yeast is grown on natural sugars which are present in grains like barley wheat rice crushed fruit juices then this yeast break downs the sugar and convert it into alcohol and this process of conversion is called as fermentation fermentation is a process of converting sugar into alcohol the fermentation was discovered by louis pasteur in 1857 now let's study the medicinal use of microorganisms can we use microorganisms as medicines yes we can when we are ill the doctors prescribe us with some antibiotic tablets or injections like penicillin the source of these tablets or injections are actually microorganisms now what do you mean by antibiotics the medicines which kill or stop the growth of disease causing microorganisms are called as antibiotics and these antibiotics nowadays are produced from bacteria and fungi example streptomycin tetracycline and erythromycin 
the antibiotics are not effective against cold and flu these are the diseases caused by viruses and antibiotics are not effective to the diseases caused by viruses vaccine just like antibiotics vaccines are also made from microorganisms to protect humans and animals against several diseases now how does this vaccine work when a disease causing microbe enters into our body the body produces antibodies to fight the invader if the microbe enter again the body remembers how to fight the microbe again so if a dead or a weakened or an inactive microbe is introduced into a healthy body the body fights and kills the invading bacteria by producing suitable antibodies and these antibodies remains in the body and protects the body from this disease causing microbes forever and this is how vaccine work several diseases like polio cholera tuberculosis smallpox and hepatitis can be prevented by vaccination we already studied how microorganisms can be used commercially the use of microorganisms in medicinal purposes now we'll see how microorganisms increases the soil fertility some microorganisms are able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere these microbes fill the soil with nitrogen and increases its fertility and they're also called as nitrogen fixers one such example is the bacteria called as rhizobium this is a rhizobium which inhibits legume root nodule as their host that is the bacteria called as rhizobium they use legume plants as a host and they reside in the root nodules they use all the carbohydrates in exchange of the nitrogen and then this bacteria rhizobium it converts the nitrogen that they have received from the atmosphere into compounds of nitrogen which is then utilized by plants from the soil through roots now other than rhizobium there are other nitrogen fixers that exist without plant host like blue green algae which is also called as cyanobacteria they don't require any host they have chlorophyll within themselves and they can make food by the process of photosynthesis and the last purpose is how microorganisms can clean the environment we often see a very large amount of dead organic matter on the ground like a pig and after some time they gradually disappear why is that these microorganisms consume on this dead organic matter that is they decompose this dead organic matter converting them into simpler substances like salt carbon dioxide which are again then used by other plants and animals plants or animal waste are decomposed by microorganisms thereby making it into manure we have studied about manure in chapter 1 and this manure increases the soil fertility as well thus these microorganisms degrade the harmful and smelly substances thereby cleaning the environment so, so we have come to an end of our video so let's take a quick recap of what all we have studied today first we studied what are microorganisms microorganisms are the living organisms around us which we cannot see with our naked eye then we studied the classification of microorganisms the first one was bacteria fungi algae protozoa the last was virus then we briefly discussed about all these groups and some of the examples as well as the diseases caused by these microorganisms then we studied where do these microorganisms live microorganisms are everywhere from hot to cold regions they live both inside as well as outside living organisms then we discussed how microorganisms affect human beings as a friend so that's all for part 1 tune in soon for the next session microorganisms friend and foe part 2 
where we'll discuss the harmful effects of microorganisms. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care. Bye-bye.